Hey, hello and welcome to today's GFG problem of the day. Hope you are doing well. So let's see today's problem, major element two. Okay. So what the problem is saying is we'll be given an array of integer r where each number represents a vote to a candidate. Okay. Return the candidates that have votes greater than one third of the total votes. If there's not a majority vote, then just return an empty array. So we had solved the exact problem last month that is on October 3rd. Okay, so like uh, the name of the problem was majority vote. It's same, but uh, here it's slight modification. Only like when we are returning the the numbers, right, which are uh, having uh, uh, like frequency greater than one third of the total votes. Okay, so okay, so anyways, uh, definitely we we are going to revise this problem. Okay, so so what the problem is trying to say is so here, right, here, here the number represents a candidate. The candidate wherein uh, the vote has been given to him. Okay. So here the candidate five, the vote was given to candidate five. So here the, the vote was given to candidate six. Okay. So we want to return all the candidates who has votes greater than, who have votes greater than one third of the total votes of the total votes. So what, what is the total vote? The total vote is the size of the array. Okay. Okay. So this is the ask. I hope you have got the ask. So first of all, now, which are those numbers in this example? The numbers are five and six. Okay. So here, what is the frequency of five? It is four. What is the frequency of six? It is, it is five. Okay. So if you see, and what is the size of the array? Zero, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the size of the array is 10, right? And uh, we want to return all the candidates who have votes greater than one third of the total votes, right? So one third of the total votes. So what is the one third of the total votes? So 10 is a total vote number of votes and divided by three, which gives us what? Three something, right? Greater than three. Okay. So here, if you see the votes to candidate five are four and the votes to candidate six are five. Okay. Which are greater than three. Okay. So we want to return five and six. So these are the candidates who have votes greater than one third of the total votes. Okay. So that's what the ask is. Okay. So I hope you have got the ask. Now, how can we solve this problem? So first of all, let's see a naive approach, right? So the naive approach will be, right, let, let's take a map. Okay, let's take a map, simple, and key value pair, right? So here the key will represent the candidate and the vote and the value will represent the number of votes to that candidate. So here, for example, what I want to do simply, uh, we'll iterate through the array and add the uh, candidates, right? And the frequency into the map. So here, two, and we'll add one as a frequency, right? We go ahead. We add five, okay, and uh, uh, we'll keep on iterating. And finally, it it will look something like this, right? The map will look something like this. Six, five will have four uh, frequency, and six will have five frequency. Okay, so this will be the final state of the map. And you just find, and then you just iterate through the map, and you check the candidates who have frequencies greater than one third of the of the. Uh, of the total number of votes. So capture those candidates and return the candidates. Okay. So this will be the naive approach, but here the space complexity will, will require is O of N. The time complexity definitely it will, uh, it will be O of N, but, but we will require extra space. That is O of N. Okay. So now we want to find something better, right? Which, uh, wherein we can solve. Can we solve this? For example, in time complexity, same uh, as this approach O of N, but space complexity should be O of 1. Okay, so let's see how, uh, how can I solve this problem? Okay, so now, now what the problem is saying is, what the problem is saying is, we want to return the candidates that have votes greater than one third of the total number of votes. So in short, what the problem is trying to say is, return all the numbers whose frequency, whose frequency is greater than one third of the, of the total size of the array, one third whose frequency is greater than one third. That is, it is appearing more than one third of the times. Okay. So here, so whenever it is the case, right? Whenever it is saying any return the numbers, which is greater than one third of the size of the array, right? That means, that means there will at the max always be two elements, two such numbers, two such numbers. Okay. Two such numbers wherein at the max, I'm saying it can be either zero or one or two. So it can be max two elements wherein their frequency can be greater than one third of the size of the array. Okay. Okay. So, so considering this, right, considering this, what we are going to do is we'll take two numbers and as there can be max two numbers, right? We'll take two numbers. 
Okay, we'll initialize, let's say, with minus one. Okay, and we'll also take a frequency of number one. We'll initialize with zero. Frequency of number two, we'll, we'll initialize with zero. Okay, now we'll start iterating. Okay, we're going to check here, right? Is, is this is this num, right? Let's say it is num, right? It is num. Is this num equal to num one? No, it is not, right? Is num equal to num two? No, it is not. Then third condition we're going to check. We're going to check is f1 equal to zero, right? Is f1 equal to zero? If it is, then what are you going to do? We're going to initialize this num with num one. That is two. And also we'll increment our frequency one, okay? So f1 is the frequency of number one. That is how many times it is appearing, okay? Now let's quickly go ahead for to the next element. Now num is pointing here. Now we're going to, we are going to check here. Is, is num equal to num one? No, it is not. Is num equal to num two? It is not. Is frequency one zero? No, it is not. Is frequency two zero? Okay, is frequency two zero? Yes, it is. Then what are you going to do? We are going to assign num to num two. Okay, and we'll also increment the frequency. Okay, then again, we're going to go to the next element. We're going to check is num equal to num one? No, it is not. Is num equal to num two? Yes, it is. We are going to increment the frequency of frequency two. Okay, then we go ahead again. We check the first condition is num equal to num one. No, it is not. Is num equal to num two? So this is num, right? Is num equal to num two? Yes, it is. We are going to increment the frequency. Again, we go. Uh, num is pointing here now. We are going to check num. The first condition num one. If it is equal, no, it is not. It is equal to num two. We are going to increment the frequency. Okay. Then we come to the next element, right? We come to the next element here. We are going to check. Now this is the num, right? We are going to check. Is num equal to num one? No, it is not. Is num equal to num two? No, it is not. Is f one zero? No, it is not. Is f two zero? No, it is not. Right? No, right? So okay. So now we will have this fifth condition that is an else condition wherein we are going to reduce wherein we are going to reduce the frequencies of the elements f one and f two. So let's say we. Uh, okay. So we decrement the frequencies of both f one and f two. So such is the case, okay, of both F1 and F2, okay. Now, now, again, uh, here, what we're going to do here is, <coughs> so now just be with me, I, you'll understand what we're doing here. So we are just identifying the potential two numbers, right? Num1 and Num2, the potential two numbers, wherein uh, their frequencies will be greater than one third, okay, of the size of the array, okay. So here, we what we did, so six, this did not match with any of the conditions, so we decremented the frequency of F1 and F2, okay, F1 and F2. Now we go to the next one, right, okay, now we go to the next one, number, again it is six, we are going to check here, is num equal to num one, no it is not, is, is it equal to num two, no it is not, is frequency one, zero, is frequency one, zero, Yes, it is, right? The third condition, it is matching. So what we are going to do? We are going to assign this num to num1, okay? And we'll also increment the frequency of f1, okay? Now let's go ahead again. Num is pointing here, right? We're going to check. Is num equal to num1? Yes, it is. So we are going to increment the frequency of f1, okay? Let's go to the next element. Num is pointing to uh, 6. Now we are checking num equal to num1. Yes, it is. Then we are incrementing the frequency of f1, okay? Then again, this num is pointing here. It matches num1. We are going to increment the frequency. Okay. So this is the final thing. Num1 is uh, is having value 6. Num2 is having value 5. F1 is having 4. And F2 is having 3. So with this, what we have done, right? With, the, with these steps, we have identified the potential two numbers wherein the frequency could be greater than one third. Now, what we are going to do now? We are going to so we are, we are done with the step one we can say and now we will initialize both f1 and f2 back to zero again now we will iterate through the array again to whatever let's write the array right this is that right now we'll start iterating again now we have our num1 and num2 okay and we have our f1 equal to zero f2 equal to zero now we're going to check here is this num equal to Let's write uh, here, uh, sorry, let's write here num1 as well. This is num1. Num1 is having value 6. Num2 
is having value 5. Okay. Now, what are we going to do here? Now, let's, this is num, right? This is num. We are going to check. Is num equal to num1? No, it is not. Is num equal to num2? No, it is not. Let's go ahead. Let's not do anything. Let's go ahead. So, num is pointing to 5 now. We are going to check. Is num1, is num equal to num1? No, it is not. Is num equal to num2? Yes, it is. We are going to increment the frequency of f2, right? Then we go to the next element. Again, we, we find a match with num2. We are going to increment the frequency of f2. Again, the same thing. We are going to increment the frequency. Same thing. We are going to increment the frequency. Okay. Here we come to the next element. We find a match with num1. We are going to increment the frequency. Okay. Same thing. And final, we'll have our frequency uh, 1 with f1 with 5 value. Right. And at the end, we are going to check. What is the n? What is the n here? n is 10. Right. We are going to check these frequencies. If f1 is greater than n by 3, which is what? Which is what? It is 3. Yes, it is. Then we are going to add num1. Okay. Now we are going to check again for f2. Is it greater than uh, n by 3? Yes, it is. We are going to add num2. And we are going to return both these numbers. So this is the intuition behind solving the problem. Okay. If you have got the intuition, then I will request you please, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Okay. Let's quickly see the code. First, I will show the Java code followed by C++. Okay. So let's have as discussed, right? Let's have two numbers. Let's uh, we can initialize with uh, minus one, right? Then we're we'll going to have two frequencies int f2 equal to zero. Okay, then as discussed, we are going to iterate to the array nums. We're going to check here if num equal to equal to num one. So we're going to increment the frequency. Else if we're going to check here num uh, num2, right? We're going to increment the frequency of f2, right? Else if f1 equal to equal to 0, then we are going to assign the num to num1. Also, we're going to increment the frequency of f1. Else if we're going to check here f2 equal to 0, then we are going to assign num to num2. Okay, and we are going to increment the frequency of F2. Else, if all the conditions are failing, then we are going to decrement F1 and F2. Okay, I have already discussed this, right, in the intuition. Now, we have, with this step, we have the potential, with this, right, we have the potential, num the two numbers, the two potential numbers, wherein their frequency is greater than one third of the total number of volts. Okay, now we will, as discussed, as the next step, we will, uh, Reinitialize those f1 and f2. We are going to iterate through the array. Okay. Here, here we are going to check if num1 if num equal to num1. We are going to increment the frequency. Else if num equal to num2, we are going to increment the frequency of f2. Right? Of f2. Now we're going to check here. Let's have the total uh, size of the array. It is nums, right? Nums dot length. Right? The total votes. We can say the total number of votes. Okay? And here we're going to check here, right? If is F1 greater than 0, sorry, greater than n by 3, right? Greater than n by 3. Okay? If it is, let's have this result Result equal to new array list. Okay. So now what are we going to do here? Result dot add num1 we are going to add, right? Similarly, we are going to check for f2. It can be the case that there are no numbers which are greater than n by 3, or there is only one number which is greater than n by 3. Okay. So this will take care, our code will take care of all those scenarios. Okay. So here we have added result one and result two. Now we are going to check here if result dot size, right? If result dot size, if it is equal to two, okay. If it is equal to two, then here we want to check. Now, now they are expecting, uh, for example, right? If this is the output, they are expecting this to be in ascending order. So it may be the case that num one is holding six and num two is holding, uh, num two is holding five. Like in our case, right? Here num one was holding six and num two is holding five. So we want in uh, sorting order, right? So we're going to check here. 
if result dot if result dot get zero if it is greater than result dot get one then simply swap the elements right gain temp equal to result dot get zero then set right result dot set zero if result dot get one right we are swapping here nothing else and result dot set one temp okay and then at the end we are going to return result so this is the code okay so let me okay let me submit it so if you have got if you have understood the solution then i'll request you to please please subscribe to the channel like the video so also this c++ code is the same right so let's quickly i won't explain i'll attach the code in the comment section it's the same as java code whatever we have written right yeah here we have taken num1 as a we have initialized with uh, integer minimum you can do with minus one as well okay so minor differences are there i'll attach the code in the comment section okay so that it will be better for you okay thanks for watching please please subscribe to the channel like the video have a happy healthy and a great day thank you so much